What's up guys, it's Chris here. As you might have seen this week, the markets are on fire. Not literally, but I'm sure you can definitely see some red creeping up into your portfolio. I've been seeing it in mine, and if you don't believe me, here is a screenshot of the daily movements of my portfolio this last Friday. But with that said, I'm incredibly excited about it. So in today's episode, we're going to go through exactly why the markets are taking a downturn, the reasonings behind it, what we can expect in the short term, will there be a recession? But lastly, and most importantly, with all of this going on, why did I go ahead and purchase 11 shares on Easy Equities in 24 hours. So there is so much to cover. Let's get started. Okay, so first thing is first, how is everyone doing? I hope everyone watching here is doing great and enjoying your life because regardless of the markets, that's what's most important. But speaking about the markets, let's jump right in. So as we said, things are going the way of red. Today is the day the bears are having their picnic, but why exactly is that happening? What changed so suddenly? Well, for the answer to that, we have to cross the Atlantic Ocean to the United States of America before coming back to South Africa. As you might know from this channel, the biggest challenge the world and the markets have had over the last year and a half is inflation. Simply put, the cost of everyday items keep going up. The main reasons are the war in Ukraine, and when the world stopped buying oil and gas from Russia, then all the energy prices went up. And remember, higher energy prices affect almost everything down to your everyday groceries. So reserve banks around the world have been raising interest rates to try and put pressure on households and businesses to bring the inflation down. And to an extent, it was slowing to a point where people were optimistic that we were on the way out and markets began rising since October. But then on the 8th of March, Jerome Powell from the US Federal Reserve Bank changed everything when he addressed the public and stated that inflation was remaining stubbornly high and that he expects interest rates to go higher than previously anticipated and possibly at a faster pace than a quarter point at a time. On top of that, there was terrible news that unemployment went down in the USA in January. Now, that sounds good, but it is supposed to go up to help reduce inflation because more money in people's pockets means more demand, which drives prices to go up. So lowering unemployment right now, at least, is bad. <laughs> now, you know the saying that when the USA sneezes, the world catches a cold. Basically, on the news that the USA is increasing rates faster and higher, the world recalibrated its expectations and global markets have done the same. There is also the possibility that there will be a recession in South Africa and many other parts of the world, although that could end up being a good thing as it gives the markets more certainty. And that, ladies and gents, is why our markets are going down this last week. But hear me out. In adversity, there is opportunity. One of my favorite quotes is by Nathan Rothschild, who said that great fortunes are made when cannonballs fall in the harbor, not when violins play in the ballroom. So with that said, let's take a look at why I'm looking at now as a good time to invest. We can very often look to history as a way to predict the future, and not that things will always be the same, but let's have a look here at the JSE Top 40. As you can see, the markets will go up and down, but importantly, let's zoom out the graph to the max. Here you start to see a story, which is that over time, no matter if the markets go through crashes and recessions, the markets do end up going up eventually and overtaking their previous highs. It doesn't mean it'll happen quickly, but at every point in history so far, this has happened. So on that premise, it would make sense to invest in the market when it is as low as possible, so that when it comes up, you can make the maximum amount of profit. Probably one of my most successful share purchases this year was with HSBC and Lloyds Bank when I bought in a sudden downturn and subsequently made around 33% each in just a few months. So with that being said, you can now see the reason why I think it would be a good time to top up on some shares. Our main investment strategy is to find shares which we believe have long-term price value and dividend income and to dollar cost into them over time. And that means to buy small amounts consistently over time to average out the buying price also and especially when the market is going down. So when interest rates start lowering and the market starts rising, we benefit the most from the price gains. All right, then let's take a look at the 11 shares that we have been buying. As you know, we always buy into three main indexes, the JSC Top 40, the S&P 500, and the FTSE 100. But on the 8th, we topped up our South African portfolio. First, we further invested an extra 400 Rand into our four banks, which are Capitec, FNB, Standard Bank, and NetBank, bringing our total investment to around 6,200 each and around 25,000 Rand total. Because the reason all these changes are happening is further raises in interest rates, which often boost banks' income. Standard Bank recently reported its highest earnings and dividend payouts in its 161-year history. 
Then we topped up our holdings in StoreAge by an extra 2,000 Rand. Whenever StoreAge's price dips, I buy extra because it's such a solid company and with dividends now over 9%, it's a very attractive income stock. So our total shareholding there is about 16,600 Rand. After that, we added another 400 Rand to our 8,000 Rand Sunlum investment. And interestingly enough, Sunlum has been an outlier in a sea of red that has gone up in the last month. It has been posting some historically high financial results and declared that it will be raising its dividend as well, which is already at 5.6%. It also owns Satrix, which just took over the whole new funds portfolio management. So it's an awesome value buy at the moment. Then on the 8th, we also transferred 3,000 Rand over to our USA portfolio. And on the 9th, we topped up every single one of our USA investments. The first are our two income funds, the Global X NASDAQ 100 covered call and the JP Morgan equity premium income. We added $39 each to these for a total investment of $650 together. And with around 12% dividend income each that pays monthly, we're slowly building our USA income and portfolio with these. Because they are mostly income focused, the more the share price goes down, the better for the returns. Then we went on to top up our next share by $39, which is the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. And we have a total of $300 invested here for a dividend income of about 3.5%. This is an ETF that tracks good US dividend stocks. So again, lower market means better share value and income. Next up, we also bought some additional shares in Simon Property Group, which right now is offering about 6% income in the US property market. So I topped this up by $40.85. And lastly, the final share that we bought extra shares in was the Vanguard S&P 500 Growth Fund, which is an ETF collection of some of the high growth companies such as technology stocks like Apple, Amazon, Google, and others. I said at the beginning of this year, I would be slowly adding a dollar cost averaging into the share. So we added an extra $6.43, which was some of the dividends we received this month from our US income stocks that we invested back into the share. So in total, we have $142 here and we'll keep adding and investing. So those are all the 11 shares and 6,000 Rand that we invested in the last few days. Now keep in mind that no one knows whether the market will go up or down in the short term and we could continue to see it decline. From what I have read, most economists say that the markets may only pivot nearer to the end of the year. But my investing strategy is to keep investing slowly and consistently throughout the year and the down market so that we're getting some shares at great value prices and higher than normal dividends. And when the market starts moving upwards, we can make some higher than usual profits on the share price growth. A great example of this is our index funds, which we've been investing the same amount every single month for over a year. And because of that, even in these down market times, we're in a profit for every single one of them, as much as 11% for the UK's FTSE 100, because we kept slowly and consistently buying into the market. And guys, that is it for today's video, where we break down the conditions we are seeing in the markets and go through all the shares we bought to top up our portfolio in this time. If you enjoy the information and being able to follow our own personal investment journey, then please leave a like on the video. And if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But until then, I'll see you guys next time, as always, on Casual Cash. Cheers.